Hi, welcome to Infinity Within Coaching Podcast. This is Nita Kruger, your host. I almost didn't do a podcast today. This week, life has gotten really unexpected. And, you know, it's kind of easy. It's easy to say, I need a break and I am going to, you know, watch TV instead of recording this podcast and meeting my deadline. And I didn't have a reason to not show up for myself. And that was the key. I wasn't sick or ill or needed, truly needed to take a break. So I decided to sit down, even though it's nine o'clock at night, and it's been a really challenging week with big hits on the heart this week. It's important that we learn how to show up for ourselves and that we learn how to differentiate between when we need a break, we're sick, we're ill, we're hurt, we have to rest, and when we need to push through and show up in this kind of a way for ourselves. They're both totally different and both equally valuable. One of the things that I wanted to talk about today and why it's so important for me to show up is I believe that we can all relate to the saying, and we've probably all seen the meme that says, your new life is going to cost you your old life. But what does that actually mean? I mean, when you really break it down and think about it, what does that actually mean? We can think about that in small ways when we first kind of get a glimpse of the idea of the healing process. We can think about it in, oh, okay, well, I want to drive this new car that's really fancy. I'm going to have to get rid of my old car and I'm going to have to get a better job in order to pay for the new car. Increase my wage, increase my income, right? But that's kind of a small way of thinking about it. If we really want to change our life from unhealthy, toxic, debt-driven relationships where the toll of being in the friendship, being in the relationship, being in the family space is a toll of debt on our heart and our soul and our mind and our spirit, if we are mentally, emotionally, psychologically, physically drained from the life that we are living. That old life, new life comparison isn't about a car. It is about truly learning how to look at your life through the lens of, is this person healthy? Is this person acting with my best interests at heart? Is this person even care about me? And do their actions and their behaviors show that? Not just once, but over and over and over. Are they able to show up for me? And to be honest, when you are leaving abuse, narcissistic abuse and codependency, you're not going to understand or know what it looks like, or what you need in order to have a healthy relationship. Those things have to be modeled and taught to us. If we were not born to families and parents or grandparents that modeled that for us, we are going to have to take that upon ourselves to learn it. One of the most important things that you can do is to learn the skills and tasks to honor you. So when we take that and apply it to the idea of the old, your new life is going to cost you your old one. If you want a love that is out of the park, beautiful, honoring, safe, healthy, where you get adored and respected and treated like the queen or the king 
that your soul knows that you are. If you want to be treated like that, you have to lose all the parts of you that are not ready to be treated like that. All the parts of you that allow people to disrespect you. All the parts of you have to dissolve and be replaced by strong, healthy, self-loving, self-actioning behaviors. You have to let go of people that you right now are addicted to. You think that they're so important and so valuable, but they treat you like you're garbage. I bet you right now, at least one person is popping to mind for you, if not many. You have got to learn to boundary out those people, to restrict their access. And the more that you restrict their access, the more that you are going to add droplets to your self-worth. As you add droplets droplets of goodness and standing up for yourself and self-respect to your core inner value, your inner vision of self, you are going to be able to add skills and tools from coaches, therapists, resources like books and online sites and um, you know, like domestic abuse hotlines. You're going to be able to learn how to stand up for yourself and honor yourself and cherish yourself. That is what your new life is going to cost you your old one. You literally cannot have toxic self-habits, low self-esteem, people-pleasing, poor boundaries, inability to say no. You cannot have these behaviors, these codependent behaviors, and attract somebody who is healthy and safe. You will repel them. You will repel healthy, safe, loving, confident people because you are not ready for that kind of a relationship. If, if you truly, truly desire to have a healthier relationship in your future of any kind, maybe this might be with your parents, your children, your spouse, you have to look at the reality are these people capable? Are these people capable of the growth needed to get across that finish line with me to the life I dream of? If you are a growth minded person and you're in a relationship or you have a parent or a sibling or a child or a best friend who is not growth minded, meaning they lack self accountability. You're going to have a difficult time growing with that person. It's likely you're going to outgrow them. And you know what I'm going to say to that? I'm going to say that's okay. And that's right. Because we cannot tether ourselves to spaces where we no longer fit. We will decay. And we will cause decay in the people, places, and things around us. Unhealthy breeds more unhealthiness. And when one person starts to grow and change and learn, if the people around them are not able to do that with them, you will outgrow them and they become a part of your old life while you create your new life. You've got to get settled with the reality that unless you are dealing with children who you can drag to doctors and drag to therapists and make them go to appointments and pay for the copay or pay for the, the, the visit and not care what happens behind those doors because you're going to just drag them and drag them and drag them, knowing that over the course of two to three years, some things are going to stick but if you cannot do that, to 
to, like, you can't do that to an adult, right? That's what I mean. Like, if you cannot do that, if you cannot get somebody to show up for themselves and try to grow with you, you are going to have to lose them. It doesn't really matter who they are. You can see them through boundaried spaces and controlled environments, but that's all that's really safe from this point forward. I know that might be really hard to take in. Because when we think about a new life, we think, why can't the person in front of me give me this respect, this kindness, this loving Why can't they buy me flowers? Why can't they fill up the car with gas? Why can't they wash the car? Why, 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 why? Instead of realizing that if I've asked that person and that person has come back with inaction over and over and over, or if they've come back with actual abuse or punishment or rage and they didn't change, The very first time it was pointed out to them, like, what the hell is this? That can fuck the fuck off. If they are not willing and able to own their role in their actions and behavior, there is not a path forward for growth with that person. Now, you can literally say that to somebody. And if they're a good covert narcissist, they're likely going to say, oh, okay, okay, okay. I'll, uh, I'll go do that. I'll go to therapy. I'll, and they'll go to two or three, or they'll take you to a marriage therapist, marriage counseling therapist, something like that, or somebody who's untrained in trauma. And all they will do is incite a circle of violence. So they will get just enough sessions to feel empowered in their actions. And <clears throat> they will feel very empowered to continue the behavior they're doing. So be very careful when you are trying to get somebody to go to therapy and grow with you, that you know where you want to go and what you want to do and what the problems are, and that the person you seek out for help actually has the, the true validity of trauma training and trauma awareness to be the guide you need, or you can get yourself in a lot deeper water than you're currently in. It is really crucial for you to start being very, very self accountable in your journey from the big three abuse, narcissistic relationships and codependency. Self-accountability allows you, it guides you to take those next steps in your journey so that in this generational lifetime, you can heal a lot of wounds that your ancestors, your parents, your grandparents may have created knowingly or unknowingly, doesn't really matter. A lot of trauma is unknowingly passed generation to generation because you learn those toxic cycles and then you go on to repeat them. And if you are not exposed and retaught safe, healthy behaviors, you don't know any different. I'm not saying that makes it okay. I'm just saying that it makes it a bit more acceptable to understand how you got where you're at and how the people around you are blind or even angry at you for wanting to change. You can heal from the emotional turmoil that you're in. Whether or not the people, places, and things around you are going to make that transition with you remains entirely to be seen in how they handle the ask how they handle an ask of your needs. Now you're already, if you've been in an abusive or a narcissistic relationship or you suffer codependency, you are already picturing people who are not going to be able to transition with you. And what I'm asking you right now, those people that you're picturing in your mind, are you willing 
to learn the skills necessary to cut them out of your life, to remove them from your from having access to you, to remove them from your daily path. Because that is what you will have to do with a lot of the people, a lot of your own behaviors, a lot of your own inactions, a lot of your own belief systems. And you will build back new, healthy, safe, in replacement of those personality behaviors and traits that you are are survival mechanisms that you learned in order to survive really horrible things. They did their job and this is your moment, your call to action to unlearn them and to step further into the new life. One thing that I have learned and even this week has taught me the grace in, in allowing the universes or God's divine timing in your life. Just have grace. When you do not understand what is happening, when you do not see a path forward that you can create, just relax, pause for a moment, breathe into the moment, And really just meditate and be mindful and allow the universe to do its job. Allow God to show up in your life. Whether you believe in God or whether you believe in the universal energies is neither here nor there. There is a lot of unexplained energies in this world that I'm sure everybody at some point in their life has witnessed. Allow the universe its role in the soulful spiritual life that you live. As a victim of narcissistic abuse, abuse or codependency, you may even feel very, very detached from self. You may have PTSD and be suffering um, from just a, a lack of knowing even who you are or how to visualize your spirit and your soul and that energy. That is okay. It's okay to be exactly where you're at. The thing to focus on is there is a healthy life out there for you. You cannot visualize what it will look like right now because it's going to be so much better than you can possibly even imagine. And how do I know that? Because I have traversed that great time span, that absolute terrifying journey. And then I went even further and I decided to do a lot of spiritual work. And this is so important. Just when you think the journey is over, it's really just beginning. So right now, if you think there's no way forward, no hope in any situation that's in front of you, what I would ask you to do, to imagine your ideal situation. And then just start asking yourself, how could I get there? What could I change about what I'm doing right now to get there? Don't think about the other person. Think about your actions or your inactions. And be very self-accountable to those actions or inactions. And when it's too much, stop breathe, allow the universe to do its thing. What we do today, like the very, very, very things that I do today in 30, 60, 90, 120 days down the road, I'm going to be reaping the rewards of that work that I do today. The breakthroughs that I've had in my own healing and spiritual soulful journey in 2024 have been based upon years of learning and unfolding the own my own journey and understanding my role in not only my life but in the lives of so many people around me and in my own children 
I want you to have that life that you dream of. But your new life is going to cost you your old life. The part of you that you bring to your old life that you can change. You have the power within you to change the direction of your destiny. I believe in you. And I know this to be true. Focus on the new life. Take one step this week. One step towards that new life. Take 10 steps, 20 steps. But if you take one, that one step is going to put into motion really positive energy and you will be able to build one more step off of it. And then one more, and then one more. Thank you guys for tuning in. I really appreciate it. I hope that this conversation, this coaching conversation has brought you some hope, some clarity in at least one purposeful direction that you want to travel. And I look forward to someday you sharing a story with me about the direction that you are going and that one thing, that one pivot, that one change of your behavior that you are going to do today, starting today, that is going to get you your new life. Because I'll tell you what, your old life, if it is filled with abandonment, abuse, neglect, trauma, that isn't the life that you want. You don't want that life for your kids. You don't want that life for your grandkids or your friends or the people you love. So start getting real about the things, the people, the places, the behaviors, the actions, the inactions within and around you that make up who you are right now and what has to change to become who you're going to be. Thanks for tuning in. Have an amazing day. Focus on the fact that you are infinite in possibilities within your mind, body, spirit, and soul. And I believe in you. Thanks for listening. This is Nita.